Hello, so it's been a while. You guys know when I've been gone for a while, for some reason, I enjoy coming back with just a... Oh, Boogie wants to say hi too. Oh my gosh. Say hi. Yeah. Oh, there she goes. Um, For some reason, I just find she wants to come up on my lap. That's the problem. Come on. Come on then. Come on then. Come on up. Come on. We're all waiting. We're all waiting. Come on up. Okay, there she is. Uh, I was saying, for some reason, when it's been a minute since I've made a video, I feel far more comfortable coming back with just a conversation <laughs> than a video because it's been so long. I have anxiety and I just want to catch up. I want to chat with you guys, but I don't think I need to make a whole like sit down video about what's been going on with me. It's too much. Let's just catch up on a, a phone call and call it a day. Boogie, sit down, please. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Okay. I do have um, quite the life update. Some changes have happened that I want to tell you guys about. For starters, I moved out of my apartment. Shocker. I know. I can never stay in the same place for more than a year. Like, I don't think I've ever renewed a lease. I always am bouncing around, trying out new, new spaces, new vibes, whatever. This time around, I am actually... I moved in with someone else. <laughs> kind of crazy kind of spontaneous um my lease was ending I felt like my last place was just really overpriced for what it was it was like a 400 square foot box uh on a street that had homeless people and trash and uh it just wasn't really the vibe for me anymore and I didn't want to pay that much then I had a friend who was like well why don't you just move in with me and I was like, hmm, interesting, maybe. And I ended up moving in with him. Yes, it's a him. Um, he's a pretty private person. So I don't know if you guys will ever meet him. Maybe one day. He's not a YouTuber. He's nobody that you know. Um, just a guy that I had been friends with for about a year, pretty much since I moved back to LA. So living with him, it's been interesting because... Prior to this, I lived alone for, what, five years? Five years. Um, and before that, I had pretty much always lived with a boyfriend. Or if I didn't live with a boyfriend, we were still having sleepovers, like, nonstop. So it felt like I was living with a boyfriend. So after having five years by myself and now being back to living with a man, Boogie! You really want to get in on this, huh? You can't you can't just let me have the spotlight. Damn. All right. What was I saying? See, she keeps breaking my train of thought too. Shh. Quiet. <laughs> um, okay. After living alone for five years and now living with a man, I've been enjoying it, actually. I think it's been really good for my mental health. I think just like having somebody here with me every day helps me with less ruminating, which is something I, I overthink. If, if, if you've watched me for even a little while, I think you can tell I overthink. Uh, so less ruminating, also just more structure with my time because he has a normal nine to five job. So I wake up when he wakes up, I go to bed when he goes to bed. Um, and also it just kind of helps me acknowledge the passage of time. Because let me tell you, when I live by myself, I can go like, I don't even know what day it is. You know what I mean? Like I have like weeks at a time where I am in this like, mm, I get in these like creative spirals where I'm working on something so obsessively that I like wear, I like I'm wearing the same clothes and like not really eating. And like, I don't really do that now that I'm living with him because I feel like he'll think I'm a psycho. <laughs> but yeah, it also just helps me. Um, acknowledge the passage of time and uh it's been fun doing things together with another human again like making dinner and like going grocery shopping and all that I think that's been really good for me because I'm still not really ready for a relationship relationship I don't know I tried the dating apps for a minute uh I, I'd not feel good about the future of dating for this generation it's why why is it so difficult it seems so difficult uh, I don't know. I'm kind of just like, eh, about that for a minute. But anyway, 
Other than that, um, I also look quite different these days. You guys, my hair was so, I mean, as you can recall or look back on my channel, my hair was really, really dark brown near black. And I reached a point where I was like, I'm over it. It's been a year. I've done it. I'm sick of having, because you know, I'm such a perfectionist. I have to go get the roots touched up like every four weeks. I'm on top of it. Actually, it reached a point where it bothered me so much that I was touching them up myself with like a little root touch up dye every two weeks because I can't stand seeing. Because my hair near like the sides of my head is actually like bleach blonde like it's really really light so it looked crazy when it would grow and it kind of looked like bald patches so i started obsessively boy you better stop <laughs> okay i'm i put her on the ground so she'll shut up anyway long story short i i reached my breaking point with dyeing my hair dark so i was like all right i gotta go back to my natural so, oh God, do I want to get into this whole story? This was like, I actually, I cried at the hair salon, you guys. I was the bitch that cried at the hair salon. I don't think I've ever done that before, but I did. Basically, I went to the same woman who had been dyeing my roots. And I told her, instead of dyeing, so like maybe she was using like, I think like a level four or something on my hair. I was like, okay, instead of doing a level four on my roots this time, I want to do like a 4.5, like just a little bit lighter so that I don't have to come as often and it can kind of blend into my, because my natural is probably like a five and a half maybe. Yeah, five and a half, six maybe. I don't know. I don't really, I don't know the colors or the numbers, but anyway, you get my my thought process, right? I was like, okay, I want I want to slowly lighten the roots so that I don't have to come as often or that I can like let the dye fade. I started using like clarifying shampoos and I was just like wanting to get the dye out of my hair a little bit. I don't know what this woman did. It doesn't make sense to me. Maybe um my hairdressers listening can chime in here. I thought when you dyed roots, it was like deposit only. Somehow I had hot roots after this, like much lighter than even my natural hair. I'm like, what did this, I, how, how is this even possible? I don't understand. And then to make it worse, like I'm feeling frantic, right? I'm looking around and I'm like, are you all seeing this? Because they're gaslighting me and saying that that's what I wanted. And I'm like, hmm. I don't think anybody wanted this. And I will insert a photo here so you guys can see. They were like, well, you said you wanted it lighter. And I was like, well, this is literally lighter than my natural. I said I wanted a 4.5. This is definitely not a 4.5. Anyway, so she ended up, you know, re dyeing it, making it dark, whatever. Problem is, because she lifted it so much that a couple months later, it's, you know, still very noticeably lighter and a different tone than the rest of my hair and me being in a position where I don't have you know a few hundred dollars to just throw at some bougie salon in LA I went back and I was like can you please fix your mistake and they didn't want to and they fought me and blah 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 and eventually she agreed to do it however <laughs> It, there it was there was missing it was patchy it was patchy okay and i'm sitting there crying in the chair cuz i know that i have to now go get pay for color correction which is very expensive or just leave it alone and my intuition told me not to trust the same woman that messed my hair up but i just didn't want to spend a bunch of money so i did anyway and so then anyway i was crying in the salon then i was like you know what fuck this i'm just going to go get color remover an attempt to remove all the dye myself. And now I know this is a bad idea. I know this is a bad idea, but I had just reached that point and I was like, fuck it, I'll like shave my head. I don't even care. At this point, I'm done. Like I just, I just want this dye out of my hair. So I used the color remover, but then the problem with that, and it actually worked so well, FYI, color oops. Okay, like it really removed, I wouldn't say like 90% of that dark dye out of my hair. I was shocked and my hair didn't even feel damaged. It felt like light and soft. But the problem is because she had lifted my roots, then all of a sudden I had these bleached roots. And so I was like, oh, I didn't think this through. 
So then I had to go to a salon, have them fix it. Um, you know, we could, this story could go on for 10 more minutes, but let's, let's just cut it short. Um, no pun intended. <laughs> I, she, she fixed it. Like it visually looked pretty good, but, um, my hair just felt very, like I couldn't get a hairbrush through it. It was catching. I didn't really have, like visually have that many split split ends, but for some reason, just brushing my hair was impossible. So I was like, "Fuck this!" And I just cut. I I cut it all off. I cut it all off myself. I literally gave myself um, maybe about like two inches below my ears, like a blunt bob, and my hair was like to my belly button, near, like maybe like an inch above my belly button. Boy. <laughs> it was like an inch above my belly button and I cut it to two inches below my ears and I just have to say I didn't think I'd be able to cut my own perfect blunt bob but I did it and I feel like I need to make a video on how to do it because when I was trying to figure out how to do it I was trying to find a video and there's like a couple but none of them are quite right and so I'm like hmm, maybe I need to do that so I'm I think this actually happened uh, quite a long time ago, this story. I cut my hair in June. So it's been a minute and I need to cut it again. So maybe I will make a video about that. Because I've been loving, actually, the short hair. I don't know why I forgot that I think I look better with short hair. And that it just feels so much better. Showering is easier. Sleeping is easier. I don't know. It, it's just such a vibe and I've really been loving it. But... If I'm being honest, I do kind of feel like I'm in a little bit of an ugly era. <laughs> I have short hair. I have short natural nails. No lashes. My skin has been acting up as always. Um, I mean, it was really, really bad for maybe like the past month and a half. I've been like in hiding. It's been that bad where I don't even really leave because I'm so embarrassed. I just feel so humiliated. Um... But lately, I do feel like it's starting to improve a little bit. So I just have to stop trying products. <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to like tell myself this. I just see these like reels or whatever of these people with perfect skin. And I'm like, oh, I need to be using this like uh, acid or retinoid or, you know, now they have those. Um, Have you guys seen those? Uh, like micro needling creams, Riedel shot. I tried using that. I don't know. I just I get so excited about the idea of like, oh, this product could give me the skin that makes me feel confident, and so I always want to try. And then it always ends up, I always end up shooting myself in the foot. So I have to stop doing that. But anyways, other than uh, image updates, work update. Clearly, you guys uh, can see that. I haven't been working. <laughs> Mostly because, well, my skin and insecurities and all the usual, right? The usual. But, um, okay, hold, hold on. What do you need, baby? Well, let's, let's just see for a minute, okay? What do you need? You need attention? You need love? You have food, you have water, you have mommy. I don't know what it is that you need right now. Mommy's on a very important call. Yes, I'm on a very important call. Can you just be quiet for a little bit? Huh? Just be quiet for a little bit? Okay. I've created a monster with this cat, you guys. Because I'm with her, like literally. I've been with her by her side physically probably 99 nine percent of her life because i'm just home so much and i always talk to her because i think it's cute right and she always talks back people will comment this on my videos oh my god it's so cute if you talk to her she talks back yeah because we've done it so much but now she she's such a talkative cat that now that i have a roommate i feel so bad because she doesn't she never shuts up and i think it's cute because she's my child you know what i mean but I think he he's never said anything, but I think I think he's annoyed. <laughs> Especially if she'll do it in the middle of the night sometimes. So I, I've been trying to train her to just like yap a little less, just a little less. But clearly it's um, clearly it's not working. Anyway, what was I saying? Uh, not working, not working. So um, yeah, I've just felt kind of paralyzed. Also, my skin issues and all that. Just. I love giving myself excuses not to work if you haven't caught on. 
I actually, although the excuses tend to be valid, you know, having a bunch of scabs on your face, that's a pretty valid excuse to not want to make a video. So there's that. Um, but also on top of that, I've just kind of felt paralyzed about what kind of content I want to make. But at this point, just keeping it 100, I'm like nearly penniless. So, <laughs> so <laughs> the pressure to make a move and just fucking do something is is definitely there. But I have to say, you guys, I don't, I don't know. Being poor, which I know people get very triggered when I call myself poor, but I'm sorry. Having zero dollars in your bank account is the definition of poor to me. I get it that you know I have the capability of making money and that I have some nice things. So maybe technically, no, technically, the definition of poor is having little to no money. And I have little to no money. I've had little to no money for the past few months. Yes, it's a choice, but it's still a state of being poor. Anyway, beside the point, what I'm trying to say is being poor does not bother me as much as I think it should. Like as much as it it would affect the average person, you know, to only have $5 for three weeks and to try to survive. (laughs) Like uh, in a weird way, it actually makes me appreciate money more. Like I feel like the inconsistency makes me happier than consistency if that makes sense so it's like um you know if like for instance when you're sick right when you're sick you quickly realize how much you took your health for granted and then when you regain your health you're like you're you're seeing life through a new lens you appreciate every clear breath in And you appreciate just being able to wake up and feeling slightly energetic. And, you know, it only lasts a couple of days, maybe a week, where you really just have this immense gratitude for something that you were taking for granted. But with money, when I go through these periods of having next to nothing, and then I get back to work and I have a little something, it just feels, it's almost like being 16 again and getting my first paycheck for my first job. And even getting like a package from Amazon is so exciting. And at one point in my career, when I was making just a fucking sickening amount of money, I, my relationship with money was disgusting. I bought so much stuff. I never looked at prices. I had no appreciation for the things that I had. And I don't know, like, it's just, do you get what I'm saying? I don't, so I feel like in a way, I kind of enjoy letting my account dry up <laughs> and then the feeling of getting money again, it's like kind of resetting my system. Because if you think about it, I, I, I guess I just feel like true appreciation and gratitude is how you feel peak joy, peak happiness. But it's hard to have that when you take everything for granted and it's just kind of human nature to do so. But um. Yeah, I still, I I need to be more stable because it's being inconsistent and having that instability in my life is a source of stress that I don't need. So I do need to work on that. Like, obviously I wanted to, I want to get it together and find my flow again with creating. And of course I've been trying to figure out my next move and I am totally aware that I, I always do this. I'm a broken record and that. I need to stop sharing my plans with you guys and just kind of like move in silence because I always have different ideas. I'm always changing my mind. I'm always coming and I'm always going. Um, but I don't know. I just like sharing my ideas and my thought process with you guys. Like it's fun for me. And so my kind of next strategy, if you will, of what I want to try to do, I have some ideas, but I don't know. I'm thinking for this channel, I want to really uh, just do very simple, chatty, uh, interactive videos that's more focused on just connecting with you guys and not necessarily like showing my life and showing my day to day because there is not much to fucking show. Okay, like I, I, my life is... The majority of people would say that my life is quite sad. Very simple, very repetitive. But for me, I'm very content with that life, so I don't I don't care. But I'm just saying, it doesn't make good uh, daily vlog content. 
So I just want to make these kind of like really chatty, interactive. Like let's say for instance, you guys uh, say in the comments, um, oh, there's this there's this certain bakery that has this certain thing. You should go try it. And then in the next video, I go and try it. You know what I mean? Like I kind of want it to be interactive in that sense um, where you guys are kind of steering the ship for me a little bit. Or or maybe you ask me like, what are your opinion? Did you watch Love Island? What's your opinion on Love Island? And I'll talk about, you know, watching Love Island, which I did. I'll get into that in a minute. But you know what I mean? I want it to be really simple, really interactive, just chatty and not trying hard. I feel like I'm really reaching a breaking point, um, not just as a creator, but as a viewer, where I'm really fucking tired of watching people fake what their life is. And they are faking it. I, I, um, 90, 95% of them. Okay, like I'm really reaching a breaking point. I I feel like the especially the whole aesthetics craze, which I don't I feel like it's still hanging on. I don't understand how, but it is. Um I'm so bored of that. I'm so tired of that. I want to see like extreme realism. That's what I want to see. And because that's what I'm craving, I feel like that's what I should be giving. So, I want to try. I don't know if I have the balls to be honest with you. And I feel like that's why no one's really giving extreme realism because it does take balls. Um, but I'd like to try. I think I have it in me somewhere. I just have to, I just have to, (laughs) I just have to be able to do it. But anyway, uh, on top of that, and I've talked about this before on my Instagram story. I don't know if I've ever talked about it here, but I've been wanting to start a second channel about learning Korean. I've been studying Korean for about five years now without losing interest. And that is saying a lot for me because usually if I get into a hobby or something, it lasts a year tops and then I'm over it. But I've been into Korean for five years. I've realized how much I love studying language and I don't think this hobby is ever going to go away. So I feel like, and I think it's going to take me at least another five years to even like be conversational in Korean because I'm teaching myself and it's really difficult so I could make a lot of content about you know study with me and tips and then also maybe do just like some fun videos that include other popular areas of the culture like k-dramas k-beauty uh like taste tests or whatever just to like diversify the channel and help pull in more people because not everybody wants to learn Korean so I don't I feel like I could make those videos and they probably get like 5,000 views and it's like is it really worth my time if I can't fund my life making those kind of videos so I don't know maybe maybe there's an idea there I might try it I haven't started a new channel in a really long time and if you're an old viewer then you know that I used to be like addicted to making new channels because there's just some there's a there's a certain like high that comes with making a new channel I can't explain it. It's so exciting to like make the design and watch the subscriber count count grow. And like, I don't know, it's very exciting. It's very fun. But the problem is, is usually I get over it really quick and I just drop the channel. (laughs) But I don't think I would do that with Korean. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I need a drink of water. I keep like swallowing and that's probably annoying to you guys. But I told myself I was going to do this call with no edits because I'm lazy and I don't want to. Oh, my God. I don't want to. uh, I don't I just really don't feel like sitting down and fine tuning this audio right now. So this is a proper unedited phone call. Okay, just hold on one second. Let me pour this water. (laughs) Okay. Mm. Oh my god, I needed that. Mm. I, uh, okay. What were we talking about? Okay, sorry, new channel. Um Yeah, but okay, back to what I was saying about realism and being sick of the whole like aesthetic life and that vibe lately i don't know what it is i just feel like i maybe my age i am 35 
I think I'm just reaching this breaking point where I really want to stop caring about how I look and about how others perceive me and just truly embrace myself. And, you know, it's funny because when I first started YouTube, I want to say from like 2009 to 2014, I really didn't care that much about how I looked. Although I was, you know, technically a beauty guru for these this time. I, well, no. I was only a beauty guru for maybe like a couple of years. So I would say during those first few years, I, maybe I cared a little bit what I looked like. I was always, you know, I, I, obviously I was always in full glam because I was making videos about makeup. But when I started vlogging, which was like 2011, um, I would go on the camera with no makeup, pimples, just wearing a pikachu t-shirt like i didn't care i really didn't care uh and then around like 2015 i would say suddenly it was like all i could see was what i didn't like about myself and being on camera started to become this like major source of anxiety and thinking about it i don't know what the catalyst was like maybe it was just oh five years after after being on camera for five years, it just I kind of reached this like mental break where I just had looked at myself for so many hours that I was starting to just hyper focus on the things that I didn't like about myself. Or maybe it was related to the rise of Instagram, which I feel like Instagram around this time was becoming more polished, more edited, and it naturally caused me to start comparing myself right but for whatever reason starting around this time I just really felt like I needed to be a certain version of myself in order to be on camera like I needed to be in full glam my skin needed to be like perfectly covered I needed to be tan and have nails and lashes and all of this and you know it just I don't know. I, I just feel like these days the urge to compare is even stronger than it was back then because the filters are more advanced. Like, no joke. I swear to God, like 10% of the girls on my explore page are AI. Like, I'm convinced because it's just like ridiculous. And, and it could also be that, you know, we're living in a time where so many people are willing to put themselves out there and we're getting access to the most genetically blessed humans for the first time ever. So it could be that, but because I'm getting older, I won't lie, like looking at gorgeous 24 year olds does make me feel Je jealous is not the feeling. Because I just I can see them and just appreciate their beauty and feel happy for them. And I'm not like, oh, I hate them. I wish it was me. It's not like that. It's almost made me more like sad. Or it's just making me more aware of the fact that my beauty is fading. Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a really hard feeling that's difficult to articulate. Because I don't really care about being beautiful to attract men. Let's just put that out there. Like, because I actually think it would be really annoying to be so beautiful to the point where like you're stared at everywhere you go and like guys come up to you and like ask for your number and stuff that's anxiety I would not want that however I think I care about beauty because it usually heavily correlates with success online and I don't really care about numbers that much but I do care about making a living and this is all I've ever done and my resume is fucking bone dry you guys <laughs> So I think part of me has this fear that's like, oh, if I get old and I get ugly, nobody's going to want to watch me and I'm going to have to go get a job at McDonald's. And, you know, so it, I think it stems from somewhere in there. I don't know. But what I'm trying to say, why I'm talking about this is like after nearly 10 years of like hyper fixation on how I look, I'm tired. Like I'm tired and I just want to be accepted as I am. I want to accept myself as I am. And I mean, that's not to say that I'm never going to wear makeup because I genuinely think makeup is fun. And I do like trying new products and having, you know, putting on a little bit of mascara and lip gloss and whatever. I like I like a nice natural look these days. But um, I think a big part of my resistance with YouTube and why I get burnt out so easily 
is feeling as if I need to be ready, which like sometimes when my skin is bad, which I would say my skin is bad probably 70% of the year, you guys. Like my definition of bad, I don't know, maybe it's not everyone's definition of bad, but for me, it's bad. When it's bad, it can take me up to an hour to just do my base makeup because I will take a little teeny tiny brush and I will go in and like fill in pores and like I have such an overly perfectionistic mind that just that process alone after I'm done getting ready I'm so exhausted and even after I get ready I don't feel good about myself I look at myself and I'm like I look like I have too much makeup on I I look weird I don't like this I don't really I don't even want to film now because I just feel like I look weird um that whole process and then even once I start filming I'm like oh this lighting's bad you can see all my pores or oh this angle's bad I look fat or oh that whole process is so mentally exhausting I don't know maybe this is sounding very privileged and like first world problems right but for whatever reason that whole process exhausts me and I just shut down. So that's why like these days, especially I come back, I make a few videos and then I disappear again because I'm so tired. I I don't know. It's just crazy. When I think back to my most fruitful time on YouTube, it was the time where I wasn't worried about my looks basically at all. Like I vlogged like what, like 130 days in a row or something. In order to be able to do that, I had to just be willing to show my real self and I remember there were many days where I didn't have makeup I didn't do hair I was literally in pajamas and I didn't care I didn't care I I woke up I got it done I had fun doing it by the way it wasn't like I was like oh another day another video I was having fun because I didn't have that resistance I didn't have that dread and so I really just want to try to get back to that state And I don't think it will be easy to get back to that state because I feel like I probably need therapy and I can't afford therapy. And so I pretty much have to just try to do it myself through different kind of like um, cognitive behavioral therapy, like kind of just exposure therapy, forcing myself to do things, sitting with the discomfort, knowing that it's going to be okay. And like, it's going to be a process, but I do really, really want to try. So can't make any promises you guys know how I do but I would um you know love to be able to come back and make a lot of content and connect with you guys and uh be a good role model as well because I feel like the climate right now is extra toxic am I wrong I don't know I'm not I don't post a lot of social media but I still consume a lot of social media and I don't know if it's just my algorithm so maybe I'm like getting a false sense of reality i just feel like the whole aesthetics craze is actually just getting more advanced and like filters are like more advanced and i think right now more than ever we need more people that are willing to counteract that and so maybe that's also like something that's pushing me to want to do this i don't know because i feel like once enough people start doing the like kind of extreme realism approach the tide will shift and and then like the people that are trying really hard to be perfect it's almost like embarrassing Mm. i don't know what that's like how i feel even now when i watch don't get me wrong sometimes like the super aesthetic like reels and stuff it's almost like a form of art it's kind of cool to watch but i think especially for young people watching that content it just breeds this like desire for extreme consumerism and desire to change everything about oneself and it's so toxic it's so bad I I think we need to just find a way to move away from that so if I can contribute in any way that's what I want to do I should say that's what I that's what I want to try to do it's difficult because I'm a very aesthetic person just naturally like my apartment is immaculate and like every little tiny thing is well thought out matches a certain design element because that's how my brain is I enjoy aesthetics a lot so I think I always kind of have a hard time of like oh I want to make this you know 
pretty content, but I want to be real. And I'm kind of like pulled back and forth. And yeah, maybe you can do both. Maybe it's definitely possible to do both. Like kind of, um, I feel like Emma Chamberlain does a good job at that. She is very artsy, but she still keeps it real. So I think you can do both. But most people are doing one or the other. Most people are doing the aesthetics, the focus on the aesthetics and the focus on the look how good my life is, look how pretty I am all the time, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, okay, I've been talking about this for fucking too long. Um, The only other thing that's been going on, let's see, let's recap. I moved, I have a roommate, it's a guy, he's a secret, you guys will probably never meet him. Um... I fucked my hair up. I cut it all off. My skin's been bad. I'm poor. (laughs) I might start a Korean channel. I want to come back and I want to make more simple, chatty, interactive, realistic vlogs. Mm. Mm. Also, I wanted to quickly touch on Love Island, which I could probably make a whole video about this because... I don't know if you guys know. I've talked about it before, but I always watch Love Island every year. I've been watching the UK. Like, I've watched everyone. I've watched all the UK. I've watched all all of the Australia. And I always thought the US was so fucking cringe and I hated it. I tried watching, I think, the season one and season two. Couldn't even finish it because I hated it so much. Just the the way that it was produced and the contestants and everything it just felt so different than uk and maybe it's because when i watch uk i get like the aspect of uh observing another culture which i really 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 enjoy hold on bookie needs more attention baby hey oh my goodness oh my goodness what is it you need love wait I'm right here. Yes, I'm right here. I know. You don't like it when I give something else attention. Just hold just hold on. Jesus. Anyway, I was saying I don't usually like the US, but I was hearing a lot of people talk about it on social media this year and I was like, "Oh, fuck it, I'll give it a try." And I realized that Peacock brought bought the rights to Love Island and they're producing it in a whole new way and it is so good. Like, what? They even have Ian Sterling narrating? I was like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa." Like it was actually when I tell you I binged the shit out of that and I caught up so fast because I just like First of all, no spoilers, no spoilers. If you guys are going to watch, which I do, if you're into like trash TV, which Love Island is the ultimate background TV. So like if you work from home and you just like having something on while you're, you know, doing your job, Love Island is it. Love Island is such a good background TV. So I will like let it play all day. Anyway, no spoilers, but... The Rob and Leah situation, like, hooked me in so hard and fast. I'm, like, obsessed with Rob. No lie. The only two people that I followed uh, after the end was Rob and Serena. Also obsessed with Serena. Ugh. Her iconic fucking post-Casa rant. I literally feel like I need to just, like, wake up every day and watch it. Because I'm like, wow, that is a woman who truly values herself will never let somebody walk all over her, will never let somebody do her dirty, and will make them feel like the fucking fool that they are, which he was a fool. So anyway, if you know, you know. It was such an iconic moment. She's amazing, and she lives in LA, and I'm like, oh my god, I wish I could be friends with her, but she's too young and too cool. (laughs) Uh, Oh, but Rob. Rob is very weird. And I feel like as somebody who's watched Love Island so much, Love Island casting, I feel like they always choose the same types of people. Every now and then they'll throw an oddball in there, but it's pretty rare. They almost always choose extroverted people and people that are party animals and loud and like bound to stir up drama, right? But Rob, a lot of people are saying that they think he's neurodivergent which i I don't want to be like a fucking uh what is it called armchair 
where you diagnose somebody. I, I don't want to do that, but I kind of I kind of agree that he definitely seems he's different. He's very he's a very different type of brain. And I find that so intriguing. I was just like I could have watched uh like if they had like a solo cam version of Love, Love Island and it just followed him, I would have watched it. He's beautiful, obviously. That has a lot to do with it. He's gorgeous. The whole snake thing is a bit much for me, but um, yeah, if you know, you know. If, you, if you're not watching Love Island or you didn't watch Love Island and you're still listening to me, you're probably like, what are you rambling on about? But if you know, you know. Uh, yeah, just like the Rob Leah storyline was very entertaining and crazy to me. Uh, what else? Um, the UK version was also pretty good. I just have to say as a whole, every time I watch this fucking show, I get so disappointed in men. Like I already know, you know, the, the, the nature of men, like if you dangle a new shiny woman in front of them, they, they get all excited and their primitive brain starts lighting up and then they go for it. And then almost always, not always, but almost always, I want to say like nine out of 10 times, they realize, oh, I don't actually like this new girl that much. And what I had with the other girl was way better suited to me. But now I fucked up. And so now I have to go get on my knees and beg and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, how sad. How sad that so many men allow their little primitive monkey brain to drive them to try to fuck this new girl and convince themselves that, oh, like, you know, she's the one for me, when really it's just all of these chemicals that have flooded your system because evolution designed you to want to fuck everything. <laughs> like, how in your mid-20s can you not be aware of that pattern and override it and, like, want to try to be smarter and choose something that could actually produce long-term happiness and, like, depth you know, I don't know. It never, it never surprises me though. Every time I see it, I'm just like, oh, here we fucking go on these guys. Um, yeah. Oh, if you watch the UK version, there was all this drama about saying how old all of the women looked. Like I saw like all of these TikToks where there was this one really viral TikTok where they showed a plastic surgeon like the photo of each girl and he guessed their age and he was saying like, oh, 38, 40, 42. And they're like in their early 20s. And I will admit when I first watched that first episode and they were showing the introductions, I was like, oh my God, these, these, these girls look old. Like they really do. And I was shocked. I was shocked when I heard their ages. But I feel so bad because probably when they got out of that house, oh, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what it must must have felt like when they first turned on their phones and they saw all of these like viral TikToks about saying that they looked old. But, you know, they had a lot of, I don't know, Botox or filler or uh, maybe too much tanning or something. I don't know why their skin and like everything looked quite old, but I felt really really sorry for them anyway that's it i've been i've been fucking rambling for 40 minutes this is <laughs> oh my god this is way too long but i'm happy to catch up with you guys and uh i'll probably be back to make a video within the next week or so i think so we'll see i don't know it's gonna be kind of experimental at first because I'm not sure how I'm going to go about my vlogging style. We'll see. Anyway, looking forward to seeing you guys again. Looking forward to connecting with you in the comments. And I'll see you soon. Okay, bye.